You may think you know what a black hole is, a region of space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. A cosmic vacuum cleaner that suckers up everything in its path, a dead end for matter and energy. But what if I told you that there are some black holes that are so different and so extreme that they challenge everything we thought we knew about them? Yes, here I'm talking about supermassive black holes, those colossal cosmic monsters that lurk at the centers of most galaxies, including our own Milky Way. These black holes are so massive that they can swallow millions or even billions of stars, and they are so powerful that they can shape the evolution of galaxies and the structure of the universe itself. But how did they get so big in the first place? And how did they form so quickly in the early universe, when everything was still young and chaotic? Well, a new study has just proposed a radical answer to these questions, and it could change everything we know about supermassive black holes. In this video, we will explore this exciting discovery and what it means for our understanding of these cosmic wonders. Stay tuned. Before we dive into the new study, let's review some of the basics of supermassive black holes and why they are so fascinating and mysterious. As you probably know, a black hole is a region of space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape from it. The boundary of a black hole is called the event horizon, and anything that crosses it is doomed to fall into the singularity, the point of infinite density and zero volume at the center of the black hole. But not all black holes are created equal. There are different types of black holes depending on their size and origin. The most common ones are stellar black holes, which form when massive stars die and collapse under their own gravity. These black holes have masses ranging from a few to tens of times that of our sun, and they can grow by absorbing matter and energy from their surroundings. But then there are supermassive black holes, which are on a whole different level. These black holes have masses ranging from millions to billions of times that of our sun, and they are usually found at the centers of large galaxies, where they dominate their environments with their immense gravity. These black holes are also extremely bright because they emit huge amounts of radiation as they accrete matter from a disk of gas and dust around them. This radiation can be detected across the electromagnetic spectrum, from radio waves to gamma rays, and it can reveal a lot about the properties and behavior of these black holes. But how do these supermassive black holes form? That's one of the biggest mysteries in astrophysics, because there is not enough time in the history of the universe for them to grow from stellar black holes by accretion alone. In fact, some supermassive black holes have been detected as early as 800 million years after the Big Bang, when the universe was only 6% of its current age. How did they get so big so fast? One clue comes from some recent discoveries made by powerful telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope. One of its first discoveries was Sears 1019, a quasar powered by a supermassive black hole with a mass of 1.6 billion times that of our sun, located 13 billion light years away from us. This means that we are seeing this quasar as it was when the universe was only 700 million years old. This is remarkable because it shows that supermassive black holes were already present in the early universe when galaxies were still forming and evolving. But how did these supermassive black holes form in such young galaxies? And what role did they play in shaping their host galaxies and their surroundings? These are some of the questions that astronomers have been trying to answer for decades, but without much success. Until now. A new study published in July 2023 has proposed a different mechanism for supermassive black hole formation that could explain how some of them grew so quickly in the early universe. The study was led by Dr. Shantanu Basu from Western University in Canada, who used computer simulations and analytical models to show that supermassive black holes can form from the direct collapse of primordial gas clouds in the early universe without going through intermediate stages of star formation or smaller black holes. The idea is that in some regions of the early universe, where gas was very dense and metal poor, meaning that it contained very few elements heavier than hydrogen and helium, the gas could collapse under its own gravity and form massive clumps that could reach up to 100,000 times the mass of our sun. These clumps would then continue to collapse and form supermassive black holes with masses of up to 10 million times that of our sun in a matter of a few million years. 
This process would bypass the usual steps of star formation and stellar black hole formation, which are much slower and less efficient. The study also showed that this mechanism could produce supermassive black holes with a range of masses and spins, depending on the initial conditions of the gas clouds. The spins of the black holes are important because they affect how fast they can accrete matter and grow. The study found that some of the black holes could have very high spins, meaning that they could rotate very fast and accrete matter very efficiently, while others could have very low spins, meaning that they could rotate very slowly and accrete matter very poorly. This could explain why some supermassive black holes are more luminous than others, and why some of them have jets of plasma shooting out from their poles, while others don't. The study also suggested that this mechanism could produce supermassive black holes in different types of galaxies, depending on the environment and the history of the gas clouds. For example, some supermassive black holes could form in isolated dwarf galaxies, while others could form in massive galaxies that experienced mergers or interactions with other galaxies. This could explain why some supermassive black holes are more massive than their host galaxies, and why some galaxies have more than one supermassive black hole at their centers. The new study is not the first one to propose the direct collapse scenario for supermassive black hole formation, but it is one of the most detailed and comprehensive ones to date. It also challenges some of the other theories that have been proposed over the years to explain how supermassive black holes form and grow. One of the most popular theories is that supermassive black holes form from the mergers of smaller black holes created by the deaths of the first massive stars in the early universe. These stars, known as Population the Three Stars, were very different from the stars we see today, because they were made mostly of hydrogen and helium, and they were much more massive and luminous than modern stars. They also lived very short lives, only a few million years, before exploding as supernovae or collapsing into black holes. These black holes could then merge with each other or with other stars or gas clouds, forming larger and larger black holes over time. This theory has some advantages, such as being consistent with our understanding of stellar evolution and being supported by observations of gravitational waves from merging black holes. However, it also has some drawbacks, such as being too slow to produce supermassive black holes in the early universe and requiring very specific conditions for the mergers to happen. Another theory is that supermassive black holes form from the collapse of massive clusters of stars in dense regions of galaxies. These clusters could contain thousands or millions of stars, which would interact with each other gravitationally and dynamically. Some of these interactions could result in collisions or mergers of stars, forming very massive stars that could then collapse into intermediate mass black holes. These black holes could then merge with each other or with other stars or gas clouds, forming larger and larger black holes over time. This theory has some advantages, such as being able to produce supermassive black holes in different types of galaxies and being supported by observations of star clusters around supermassive black holes. However, it also has some drawbacks, such as being too rare to produce enough supermassive black holes in the early universe and requiring very high densities and velocities for the collisions or mergers to happen. As you can see, none of these theories is perfect or complete. They all have their strengths and weaknesses, and they all face some challenges and open questions. That's why astronomers are constantly looking for new ways to test them and to find new evidence or clues that could help them solve this mystery. But this is not the end of the story. There are still many uncertainties and unknowns about this mechanism and about other possible mechanisms for supermassive black hole formation. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to leave a comment below with your thoughts and questions about this topic. We would love to hear from you. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the wonders of the universe.